this edition of Critical Mass Radio Show. I am your host, Richard Franzi, and this is podcast epi- episode number 1006. Civic 50, a national initiative of points of light, is now branching into Orange County. This is the first time the initiative has been localized for a specific market. Orange County Business Journal and One OC are partnering to recognize OC's 50 most community-minded businesses. I've invited Tim Strau, huh, VP and CEO, and Amy Sveto, Fredo, Sveto? Sredo. Sredo <laughs> Philanthropy <laughs> Publications Director for uh, OCBJ to come and talk about this exciting launching of a new program. But before we get into talking about that program, maybe we could start with Amy. and You could just give us a little bit about who you are, and then Tim, when she's finished, come to you, okay? Sounds good. All right, welcome good. to the show. Thanks for having us. I have worked for the Business Journals all my career, about 30 years, in various sales and management roles. Past 12 years, been here at the Orange County Business Journal in charge of assisting nonprofit organizations with their marketing needs and producing several philanthropic publications for our paper uh, Charity Event Guide, Giving Guide, and OC Philanthropy. Always wanted the Business Journal to host a philanthropic, philanthropic event as part of our group of events, and when 1OC approached me with the local Civic 50 idea, I knew it was a perfect fit for us. Well, that's great. Uh, here on Critical Mass Radio Show, about once a month, we feature a worthy Orange County-based nonprofit. It's something that um, I saw an article years ago that there were several thousand nonprofits here in, in Orange County, and I was thinking, I can only name a handful of them. So and so true. it was my way to try to get a little bit more exposure for some of those worthy causes. You know, you name them, you name the the larger ones, United Way, whatever, American Heart Association. But there are many good organizations that are trying to help the needy here in Orange County. So Over 5,500. That, well, that, that's right. It's a, it's a big number. <laughs> yeah, that's a big number. So, Tim, tell us a little bit about what you do as the VP and COO for 1OC. Yeah, thanks, Rick. I've, um, I've been fortunate enough to actually have a uh, three-decade career in the nonprofit sector here wow. in Orange County. Wow. So Look it's it's too. been uh, it's been very personal, uh, purposeful, and been very passionate about uh, mission and cause and how nonprofits can can help uh, strengthen our community. Yeah. I spent 22 years with the YMCA of Orange County, and okay. then the, I'm on my ninth year now at 1OC. And our mission at 1OC is to accelerate nonprofit success. So we get to work with nonprofits to help strengthen their capacity so they can actually serve more. The needs are, are growing greater each year in Orange County, and it's an opportunity for these nonprofits to meet those those needs with also the growing challenges they have in terms of their own uh, resources, infrastructure, and being able to uh, provide more services and programs for those that are in need. Mm-hmm. So, the, thank you. So, the audience that listens to the radio show tend to be business owners and executives of lower middle market companies, many of which are here in Southern California and also then in Orange County. Um, I'm familiar with 1OC is also helping to place talent with uh, worthy organization. So, if, if any of those individuals are interested in maybe finding board seats or getting involved with a nonprofit, would 1OC be a place to go to talk to about the kind of organizations they might get involved with? Yeah, Rick, that, that's one. Of, that's one of our fortes. Um, 1OC has been around for over 60 years. We actually started as the Volunteer Center Orange County, and so that is still a foundational uh, service and program that we offer. So, individuals, companies. Uh, groups that are interested in volunteering projects, whether they're hands-on volunteer, volunteering where they want to go out and help maybe uh, pack food boxes at the local food bank, or skill-based volunteering, which what you're referring to, which is where we have board members or individuals that have specific skill sets around uh, HR or maybe marketing, uh, and they'll do pro bono service to help nonprofits that don't have those skill sets or resources to meet those needs. We're always looking for individuals to help these uh, nonprofits, the place to goes to 1OC, we'll match you up. Okay, and that is the website. Correct. One, 1OC.org, one OC, right. The, spelled out one. one O-N-E-O-C dot org. All right, all right. Now, Tim and Amy, let's get on to part of the reason why I invited you to be here today, which was to explore this Civic 50. Amy, I'm wondering if you could tell me a little bit about the Civic 50. You know, what is it and why did you decide to advocate to bring it to Orange County? Absolutely. It actually has started as a national initiative 
about four, five years ago, in 2012, it was an initiative of Points of Light, honoring the 50 most community-minded businesses in the nation each year, determined by an annual survey produced by True Impact. It was founded in partnership with Bloomberg and the National Conference on Citizenship. Me the methodology was developed with a high-profile working group of leading researchers, academics, and industry thought leaders. The survey cr criteria includes investment, integration, impact, and in institutionalization. Those are the areas that um, a survey participant would be evaluated on. Dan McQuaid from 1OC went to the National C Civic 50 event in 2016, came back afterwards and approached me in wanting to partner with the Business Journal in potentially hosting a local event for the first time in the country. So we were really excited about that notion. It seemed like a great fit for us at the Business Journal with us doing awards luncheons and list formatted uh, things in the paper with our lists each week. So we um, approached Points of Light and True Impact to get their support and involvement in our localization of this national survey. We localized it in that uh, the national survey is actually based on revenue and our local survey is going to be based on number of employees. Okay. So that was one of the ways we localized it. We're also segmenting the local survey into small, medium, and large segments Good. so that all size businesses can participate on equal playing fields. So a small business would be 15 to 99 employees in our local survey. Medium would be 100 to 499, and large would be 500 plus. So there's something for everyone then. Absolutely. So if you're listening to this either live on octalkradio.net or as a podcast, we're going to give you a little bit more information later on about how you can uh, get active and maybe submit your company for consideration. But um, when you first went to the Points of Light, were they had nobody approached them with this idea, or or, or how, were they receptive to the idea? I mean, they love the idea. I don't know that anyone had approached them. They wow. would, frankly, it's a win-win in that they would love to see this, obviously grow into other markets and the business journals are one way and the 1OC similar uh, organizations like 1OC in other parts of the country are great ways to make this expand into other markets uh, the idea being that local participants can then grow on to be part of the national process so it's a great funnel for them yeah it's sort the of national. a feeder feeder yep. system right it's a feeder system for them so they and they're benefiting from the branding as well so they'll have their branding involved in our local event and then of course we're benefiting from all of their hard work with the national survey and efforts that they did right. using their survey as a model right so I, I might get this wrong but it feels like ocbj might be filling the role that bloomberg was filling at a filling at a national level yeah very similar okay yeah. so this is this is great this is this is very exciting, and um, I I find that small business owners and middle market leaders are tend to be very giving anyway, right? And many times their good efforts aren't always noticed, and so here's an opportunity for them to inspire others by their deeds and actions. Yes, absolutely. Is there anything else about this that we didn't get you to talk about the Civic Fifty? Well, there's certainly a process involved. I can elaborate a little bit more on that, but there's a point system involved. So the small, medium, and large uh, firms will all be evaluated objectively on a point system. So it's a multiple choice uh, and an objective information point system that will be evaluated through True Impact. They'll be established with a point system, and then each of these firms will be on separate lists that we do, small, medium, and large segmented lists for the list that we publish. Um, is it? Uh, you might have said it, and okay. I'm sorry if I missed it. Mm -hmm. um, when is the coming out party for this? When is it going to be announced? Yeah, the party will be the awards luncheon will okay. be October 23rd okay. at the Hotel Irvine. Yeah, of course. And the publication will be, excuse me, October 19th is the awards luncheon. October 23 is the publication date when we will have the list and a whole special highlighting the 50. So in addition to the, to the, in, in, traditional Orange County Business Journal fashion, you get the publication coverage and all that exposure in the publication, and then you get the opportunity to have a wonderful luncheon at the Hotel Irvine, That's right. where you get recognized in front of a larger audience, right? That's right. So That's in addition right. to just doing this good work, there's a great opportunity for small and medium-sized companies, as well as large firms here in Orange County. That's right. All right. <coughs> Whoa. We're going to take a short break here. <coughs> Sorry about that, Paul. And we'll be right back after this word from our sponsors. Richard Franzi is the author of two popular business books for CEOs. His first book, Critical Mass, The Ten Explosive Powers of CEO Peer Groups, was the first book ever written on the secret value of CEO peer groups. His second book, 
now with newly updated information, is Critical Mass, the power of CEO guiding principles. Richard's books contain powerful information to help CEOs running middle market companies gain valuable insight to improve their decision-making skills. Richard's books are available as paperbacks or Kindle versions from Amazon.com. To find them, type Richard Franzi in the search box. And welcome back to this edition of Critical Mass Radio Show. Thank God the break was very timely. Got a little choked up there right before the uh, last break. But I'd like to welcome you back to the show. I am your host, Richard Franzi. All of our shows can be heard anytime on anytime on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, several hundred former guest websites whose CEOs and COOs have been on the show, and they put the player right there on their website. You know, since we started this show in 2009, we've reached several hundred thousand listeners with our live stream here on octalkradio.net and our podcast. Simply type in these four words in your favorite podcasting software to receive our weekly shows, Critical Mass Radio Show. And like I said, you'll get great interviews with outstanding people like Amy and Tim. Uh, Tim, I wonder if we could come to you. What do you look for and look to achieve by honoring community-minded companies in Orange County? Why does it sound like a good idea to you? Well, well, when we first thought of this idea, um, th th this is, I'm going to go back to something you said earlier, and that was that there's a lot of small and mid-sized companies doing great work out there. They're socially minded, but, but they're not really recognized. There's not an opportunity for them to have a forum to really think about and talk about the, the, the great work that they're doing. Right. And, and I, I think, so I, when, I, when, I, when I think about the Orange County Civic 50, this first time event to get organizations and, and businesses to come together to not only be recognized, but to create more awareness out there. I think that's one of the biggest challenges as we're working with companies in Orange County is that uh, they're, they're recognizing more and more that, that doing good is good for business. There's a return on that investment. Right. And in order to do that more effectively, um, they know that they need to, to do this with um, more strategically and, and with more intentionality. And I think a component of that is the recognition piece of it. Right. So having a forum is, is, is part of that idea of, of how do you engage more companies in this work and, and the good work that's going out in the community. So doing this good work is good for business. Uh, the second is I think it opens more pathways for companies to learn about leading corporate social responsibility practices. Um, often to uh, often, um, too often, I should say, when we, we are um, working with companies, they feel like they're isolated. They're on their own little island, and they don't know who to go to and, and how to benchmark this. And, and the Civic 50 will start doing that by doing this on an annual basis is to start looking at what are they doing well, what things do they want to improve, what can they learn from other leading practitioners, and how can they get better at doing this social good? I believe, and one of the reasons why we do this radio show is that I believe in the power of peer learning. That's why I do the CEO peer groups that I lead. I think, you know, while experience is the best teacher, sometimes some lessons are best learned vicariously through the experiences of others. You know, one of the things that I was thinking about, Tim, as you were talking about that is, it, for those that are considering applying, it's not only to get the recognition, I think culturally for the employees to go through this process of reminding everybody what we've done for the community and then possibly to be selected as one of the Civic 50s and to be recognized for that, I think that's a empowering message, especially with millennials in your workforce. That is a that is a great opportunity to build an engaged workforce around the good that you're doing anyway. Right. I, I think it's going to be, Rick, a major differentiator over the next five years. Uh, I was at uh, recently an HR forum where they're talking about the future workforce and that 60% of our workforce by the year 2020 will be millennials. And millennials stand for a lot of cause yes. and, and, and cause related activities. So not only are consumers looking uh, this way and vendors, but also uh, your future employees. So if you're looking at attracting and retaining talent, this is a big differentiator that companies need to be looking at in terms of their future workforce. So talking about uh, workforce, I'd like to turn the question maybe to you, Tim, if I could one more time. And that is, I like to ask what I call, we've called the guiding principle question. Uh, uh, my second book is really a collection. It's in its third edition now, a collection of answers like the one you're about to give, which is, you know, if you have an overarching philosophy for how you're leading your organization and kind of growing it, would you take a minute, Tim, and share it with our audience, please? Right. Um, so, so 1OC, we're, we're very fortunate to have just a tremendous staff team. 
And, and I think that comes from some, some really guiding principles that we live by. One is that understand the purpose of the organization, in this case as, as a nonprofit organization, understanding our mission and living it every day and making decisions around that. Two, um, recognize, I think it's important that top leadership, that employees are your greatest asset. Hmm. Give the parameters, um, build a culture of trust, and I always say just get out of the way. Hire the right people, get out of the way, have the, have the parameters set, Build that culture of trust, and wonderful things can happen if people are because people become inspired by not only the work that's that's that the organi- the direction the organization is heading, but by the work that they can accomplish uh, to meet to meet and fulfill that mission of the organization. And 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 I think third, I, I think this is really important. There's actually two others, real quick, Rick, on this one. One is um, leaders never stop listening. I what? think it's li- leaders never <laughs> stop. Uh, that was listening. a joke. See, okay, you, you got to laugh here. Yeah, that's great. Right. <laughs> but I'm bummed. Just kidding. Sorry. Uh, but, but I think that's I really important. I think um, too often, uh, as as um, leaders t- uh, become even more successful, the successful leaders yes. tend to figure out this is the there's only one way, or it's my way to do it. Right. And I think that's uh, paramount. And, and last, I have a personal you. board of advisors. I always um, working with my team, making sure that there's individuals that they, they there's individuals outside of the workforce that they can um, work with in in, in all aspects of their lives so they become more holistic and become the most well-rounded person they can be. So that's what I live by. I I love all of those, the last two especially, and the last one probably predominantly because part of what I believe is getting leaders in a room with other leaders who aren't in their same industry or space, they can gain so much insight and knowledge just from listening to their experiences and being open to being coached by people who are their peers, it, it's transformative for them and their businesses. For, for the company to grow, the leaders have right. to grow. Absolutely. Right. Well, this is great. All right. So, uh, Amy, we've neglected you for a few minutes. Let's come back and talk I'm to back. you. Yay, she's back. <laughs> um, you're going to be recognizing, we said, the top 50 at the awards luncheon in October. Let, take, take us take us to that event because this is the, the first one. It's sort of something that we talked about um earlier was the opportunity to participate in the first of these kind of recognitions really is kind of awesome for a lot of reasons so i would encourage the listeners of the radio show and the members of my community to consider putting your good words down in writing and submitting them to the orange county business journal which we're going to talk about in a minute but anyway let's talk about what's going to happen around the event Okay, so at the event, which again is October 19th, Hotel Irvine, it's a luncheon. We will be recognizing all 50 of the community-minded businesses that are selected through the survey process. We will also, uh, we will specifically recognize through an awards program the five awards, one for the number one small business, one for the number one medium, and one for the large business of the three lists that we're publishing. We will also have a Rising Star Award and a Lifetime Achievement Award, so we'll be recognizing the business that has done the most coming out of the gate in their first year of giving and then that one that has done the most over multiple years and when you say a year are you talking what is the what's the time bound there is it last year or is it in uh, the prior 12 months okay okay so and the submissions are going to be due well in advance of october because you've got to get time to review them and right, 50 right. is a lot to read and you're going to get more than 50 submissions so you guys just need some time to figure that surveys out surveys are all due june 30 summertime is when all the calculations are done we'll have results by labor day time frame and then publishing right. in october so right. we'll have time to pull it all together well this is awesome we have a few minutes left here on critical mass radio show um i wonder tim if you could just we've we, we've spent some time talking about 1oc and i think that's valid it's a worthy organization doing great work here in Orange County, but, uh, you know, what's the future hold for your organization? So so our, the future of, of 1OC is, is one that um, there are opportunities for us to go deeper and engage more uh, companies and nonprofits in the work that's going on here in Orange County. So we, we see ourselves as one to be that connector, mm-hmm. that, that, that they're, for us to, to strengthen Orange County, and even looking at this, some of our surrounding communities, that if we can have more of our companies engaging with nonprofits and our nonprofits really understanding the needs of what companies are looking for, um, we, we can do great things here. So that, that's what we see in our future. And we have a terrific board of directors that um, believe in, in the mission mm-hmm. and that work and that direction. And uh, 
we we just want to get more people engaged in this community. It's it's one that I, I grew up in. I've lived my entire life. Wow! And I've uh, been for, very fortunate to um, to uh, see the growth in this county. But there's a lot of work ahead of us, and uh, we, we really need everybody to work together to make a difference. You know, and it's not only a one way street between um, a public or private company working with a nonprofit, because in my direct experience. Um, Nonprofits of a similar size to a small privately held firm, I think m many times, if not most times, does a much better job at understanding their mission, their vision, their values, their strategic plan, investing in that opportunity to really think about the future. And th those are some best practices that a lot of privately held firms, just by being on the board or active with nonprofits, can try to bring back and to run their organizations kind of in a different way as well. Absolutely. We we utilize our board of directors as advisors in that way, even though they have the fiduciary responsibility of the organization. Uh, in my career, I've always looked to board members for guidance, advice, best practices, and ways that we can incorporate um, some of those those learnings and, and skill sets back into our organization to become stronger. Right. Yes. Is Sherry Benjamin's uh, on your board? Sherry Benjamin's is on our okay. board. We're very fortunate to have yes. her. She's awesome. Yes, we she love is. her yes, here on Critical too. Mass Radio Show. <laughs> Shout out to Sherry Benjamin. All right. Um, Last question for both of you, and I think this time we'll start with you, and then, Amy, if we can end with you, would that be all right? Sure. And that is, if someone would like to learn more about this uh, opportunity or more about your organization, where would you suggest they go to find out more? So so the best way with 1OC is, as I mentioned earlier, is to go to our website at 1OC.org. Um, also our Facebook, which is at 1OC.org, uh, and Twitter is at 1OC. So those are the three best ways. All right, that was simple. All right, your turn. And more specifically, there is a link, 1OC.org backslash OCCivic50, where you can find the survey, you can find uh, FAQs, you can get technical assistance through a phone call or an email if you need it. And uh, the survey itself, you can expect it to take about 45 to 60 minutes, so allocate that time. There's also a link to some questions, some pre-survey questions that are good to get your hands on ahead of time just to make the survey go a little more. Yeah, and again, I, what a great way to get, um, as a leader of a small or middle market company or a large company, what a great way to remind your people of what the company is doing that is doing good for others in the community, but then also bring it together in a way that might get some recognition as well as esprit de corps for the culture. So I really... Thank you for reaching out to Critical Mass Radio Show to talk about Civic 50 here on the program. I wish you guys nothing but wild success. Hopefully you get overrun with applications, and you, it makes it very hard to pick just 50 out of all the people that, no, that nominate their companies. Thank you for being friends of the program and part of our Critical Mass community. Amy, thank you. Thank you. Tim, thank you. Thanks for having us, Rick. We appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the engineer, Paul Roberts, has told me it's time to say thank you all for listening to the radio show. Paul is the engineer for today's program. We're lucky to have the station owner as our engineer for today. Our producers are Joan Park, Crystal Nunley, and Haley Stern. If you'd like to learn more about this radio show or the CEO peer groups that I lead, then visit my company's website, criticalmass4business.com. Mm -hmm.